Hello, YouTube friends. Bano Chart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. I do appreciate it. And today, I want to break down the uh, setup of this tank here and how it was moved from uh, just an empty, an empty tank, a rimless 90 gallon from uh, my friends over at Glass Cages, and how we turned that from this condition into a um, a fully decorated and fully stocked tank. So uh, let's go ahead and get into how we were able to uh, to take this in a relatively short period of time after getting it on the stand and uh, get it into this kind of condition. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So of course the initial challenge was to uh, move the, uh, the fish from this 55 gallon Aquion tank over to the um, to the newly set up 90 gallon in a way that would be the least stressful for the fish and of course not result in uh, any fish dying in the process. The tank was filled and how the substrate and all that was added was covered in a video just released just prior to this one I think about a week or so ago. So the first thing was to move over filtration. One of the best ways to get a tank going is to bring over filtration from an established tank. So naturally, the filtration I wanted to move over was the was the hang on back filter that had been running on the uh, 55 gallon. I didn't do any maintenance on this filter and it's probably very close to needing maintenance, but I actually wanted it a little bit a little bit gucked up, a little bit full of um, of you know bacteria and uh, detritus because that was going to bring over the what I needed, the beneficial bacteria that is needed to help convert that ammonia to nitrite and of course nitrite to nitrate. So I went ahead and added that Marineland, it's called a Marineland Emperor 400 dual bio wheel. I went ahead and added it to the tank. Now keep in mind, the water in that 90 gallon tank has been treated. If you do these kind of things and you haven't treated the water, and if it's just tap water, you're gonna kill off all your beneficial bacteria. So be sure that you have the water treated. In this case, I treated it with uh, Fritz Complete. And then I added, I added the uh, hang on back filter, which was loaded with beneficial bacteria. I also had been treating the tank with Fritz Turbo 700. So the tank was uh, pretty, in pretty good shape, pretty seasoned. And, uh, and now I, I needed to kind of get the courage here to move the fish and the decor, including this driftwood and plastic plant from Elite Cichlids and a cave from Underwater Galleries. The cave was the home of the Paratilapia polini, that starry night, that blackfish chasing other fish around. So really wanted to get that cave over there. I also had some very nice Mopani wood. This is Mopani wood from a company called Zoomed. And I picked that up at the Franklin, at the Franklin pet store that I I actually did a video on it. I had been soaking the Mopani wood in hot water for a couple of weeks and it was still leaching tannins, making the water look like tea. So I decided to use some of this matrix carbon, some of the best carbon I've, I've come across based on some just an accidental experiment I did once. It absorbs like no other carbon I've come across. And so I uh, filled up a couple mesh bags you have to use fine mesh bags with this carbon or the carbon will just come right out of the bag through the cutouts, through the holes. And you got to really rinse it because it uh, really releases a lot of black dust. I shoved a couple mesh bags right into the hang on back filter. One of the advantages of a hang on back is how easy it is to add or remove media. 
I'll leave the carpet in there for about a month and then go ahead and just throw it out because of course it just absorbs all it can absorb and it more or less expires. So um, the tank was ready for me to start adding the decor and again as I transferred over the decor nothing was cleaned because I wanted everything growing on the decor the beneficial bacteria right growing on that decor to be, to be brought over to this tank. I had on the tank an expertmatic filter that I had added. This was a new a new expertmatic helping to circulate some water and add oxygen with surface tension breakup which is important for beneficial bacteria. And there was a heater in there from Hyger, a 500 watt heater. And the heater has a sensor but for some reason the suction cups on the sensor wouldn't hold on to the glass so I had to trap it on top of the expert Matic. It has a control just you control the heater outside of the tank and I really liked the way the heater heated the tank up very quickly up to the desired temperature. You can see the Mopani wood is absolutely beautiful. Very red and brown. I had three very nice pieces I had picked up for what I thought was a bargain under ten dollars each piece. I've seen pieces of driftwood not nearly as nice going for forty fifty dollars. These pieces were exceptional. I wasn't really sure how I was going to use them until I put them into the water. One advantage of having soaked them for so long to remove the tannins is that they didn't float or try and float what you know whatsoever. They stayed put exactly where I put them. You'll see with the other pieces of driftwood, they usually have a piece of slate like this one here that I picked up from Aquatic Critters. It has a piece of slate attached to the bottom so that it doesn't float and really stays put. I had two of those pieces. So I dropped them in the aquarium and, and where I put them initially didn't wasn't where they ended up, but I was just sort of uh, painting my canvas as I go. One of the things I love about setting up a new tank, it really is like a canvas and you're looking at uh, you're looking at balance, you're looking at color, you're looking at you're imagining the fish going in and out of what you're setting up. And so uh, look at this big piece of slate at the bottom of this uh, of this piece that was put together for me by Elite Cichlids. It's plastic plants. I've given up on real plants because the fish just destroy them. Even though I have some real plants tucked inside of these plastic plants, a little bit out of reach, sort of fooling the fish. Just some life plants from when I had first set up the tank, hoping that they would survive with South Americans, but they went ahead and destroyed them. Went ahead and repositioned some of the uh, driftwood and got it all into place in the way the way I thought it was appealing to me. I had a piece of plant that broke off that just needed to be tucked in place where it would uh, where it would stay. And then I had to transfer over these um, these very nice rocks that I had picked up also from the aquatic critter here in Nashville. And again, I have to emphasize that nothing was nothing was clean before bringing over. Here's the cave from uh, Underwater Galleries, the home of the Starry Night. So I definitely wanted to get that in there. And then I brought over the, the rocks. Love the color of these rocks. I actually picked up quite a few of them. have them for this tank, and I also have them in the African Cichlid tank. Just love the way they look. I was thinking of adding one more rock on the far right side, but I don't know, I kind of like it like this with a nice open swim area on the right side of the tank. It was a little cloudy like you would expect in a brand new tank. And it was time to bring over the, uh, the fish, so I wanted to make sure I had a good temperature match. The temperature was within a degree to a degree and a half, so I was really good to go, but just to ensure that I would minimize the shock of coming over, I added tank water 
from the 55 gallon to the larger 90 gallon. A couple bucketfuls. This would help to um, not just even out temperature, but also to um, maybe smooth out the pH. If there was any pH difference between the two tanks, this would help to smooth it out. pH, a shock in pH, is going to be far harder on a fish than a temperature shock. So, uh, so I went ahead and added some buckets of water from the 55 so that essentially what I was ending up with, one way to look at it, is I was ending up with a big water change. I had to push the light all the way to the back. And again, that's a Heiger. That's one of those Heiger LEDs that comes with a, um, a timer. I really like it. I like the job it does. And uh, I actually did a video on both the heater and the, uh, and the light. You can access that. I'll probably include a link. I removed some water from the 55 because if you've ever chased fish around, you know how fast and how uh, how clever they are about getting away from you. So I want to put the odds in my favor. Usually I'll lower the water level way down and then put a divider in. But I didn't do it this time. I just took it down a bit. And, uh, and I had been treating the water on a daily basis for the last four days before making this video, but I thought I'd go ahead and just give it another shot of, uh, of Fritz Complete. This Fritz Complete was, this was actually sent to me by the Aquarium Co-op. That's that t-shirt that I'm wearing, along with some of this, some of this uh, vitamins for plants. You just pump it in there and it'll help the plants that are hiding in the plastic plants. I also use some of this uh, Turbo, the Fritz Turbo 700. Again, for about four days, I've been treating the tank with it. So it has a, assuming Turbo is doing its job, the Fritz Turbo 700 is doing its job, I have a, a good colony of bacteria already in the tank together with the bacteria I brought over with the decor and the hang on back filter, I felt I was ready to bring over fish. A little scary, you know, you don't, you, you hope you got everything right, but I felt that I had done all the steps that I could do to ensure that the fish would come over smoothly. I sped up this process because you don't need to see me chasing fish around for 20 minutes, but uh, rest assured, I, I captured every one of them and added them to the new tank. Keeping a good eye on them. I mean, if you add the first fish and you see them go immediately into some type of distress, you know you've got a problem. So I kept a good eye on them and uh, as I was bringing them over and I was able to uh, round them all up and drop them into their new home. And uh, after putting them in there, I mean, I noticed that they immediately just started to carry on with the same types of behavior that they were, that they had in their 55, interacting with each other, chasing each other, and uh, you know, their none of them had collapsed fins, none of them was uh, going through any kind of unusual shaking or anything. They all looked uh, calm, and uh, you know, certainly a little curious about the new home they were in. But you can see, they're swimming around and interacting and kind of, uh, you know, I checked out, checked them out against that list of healthy fish that I released in that video last weekend. And they look good. They all look good. They were bright and uh, that first feeding that evening, they all ate like uh, like they usually do, like little pigs. In their prior home, in the 55, I put the uh, Eureka Red, who's pretty excited, coming from a, a 29 gallon where he was in solitary confinement for being a jerk fish. He was moved over to the uh, 55, and eventually I'll add some other African cichlids in there with him 
some of the ones that are a little more aggressive, like the Venusus, the living stone eye, fish like that, a hawk maybe, maybe a trout. And then we'll, you know, I'll move them over to the 210 gallon that's, uh, that I'm going to be getting. But he certainly uh, was pretty excited in his new and much larger home coming out of that little 20, 29 gallon solitary confinement cell that he was in. In the 29, where I where I had the uh, where I had the Eureka, I put the uh, the the odd couple. I call them the odd couple because normally I wouldn't keep an African cichlid with a South American, but I have a Jack Dempsey that I picked up from Tom and Joe over at Glass Cages. The Jack Dempsey's name is Tom. We named him after Tom, the founder of Glass Cages. And there's a uh, there's a redfin borelii in there that's putting on some size so I can add him to the African cichlid tank, but I'm not sure if I am because I think it might, I might have ended up with another female and I want that tank to be all male. But that Jack, Jack Dempsey is looking beautiful and in the beginning of, uh, of June, he'll be ready to go over and join the rest of the South American uh, cichlids in the, in the new 90 gallon. Look at the markings, the blue on that guy. Absolutely beautiful. So that's how I was able to move those fish into core over to this tank in a relatively short period of time without any casualties and as smooth as possible, essentially making the move um, the equivalent impact on the fish like you'd have with a very large water change. I did add some Fritz Turbo to make up for the fact that I wasn't bringing over the substrate, which as you know, the substrate contains a tremendous amount of beneficial bacteria. So because I was leaving that behind in the 55, I figured I'd go ahead and cover all my bases and use some of that Turbo, that Fritz Turbo Start 700. We'll talk more about this, of course, at the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. Saturdays at 11 a.m. Central. I hope you can join me. It's a great, great group of fish keepers, and we have a lot of fun. And uh, if you feel like you're getting something out of the channel and you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell and that up, you know, that thumbs up if you care to. And that that tells it tells uh, YouTube that you're getting something out of the content of this channel, and it encourages YouTube to go ahead and uh, recommend it to other people. Thank you for tuning in, my friends. You are appreciated.